Well, hello. Uh, this is a 2016 R1200 RT. I got it here tonight just to do a quick uh, review of the bike, an overview of the bike more so, and my impressions of riding it, and to compare it against my K16. Uh, to begin, the biggest question I almost always get, and I read all the time on most of the sport touring forums, when it comes to BMW motorcycles, there's always that choice that people ask between a K1600, whether it's a GT or GTL, and an RT. And really, I'll sum it up in the same response I always give, because I've owned both, is that the RT, whether it's this one, or the previous generation, or even the generation before that, is a slightly smaller, much lighter motorcycle. And although it doesn't look it, it's actually a very sporty motorcycle in the curves. It's very easy to roll it from side to side. The GT is more of a straight line powerhouse cruise missile. And uh, that might not be a, a great articulate way of explaining the difference, but it, it does cover off, in my gut, how I feel about the two different motorcycles. Uh, this one has, a, has an, a boxer engine, which is a lot less expensive to produce, I'm told. Has a significantly less power. I'm not sure what the actual numbers are. This is rated at 125, and I believe the K1600 is rated at 145 horsepower. Now, it doesn't tell the whole story. Of course, there's torque numbers, which vary between the two quite dramatically. Uh, I think the K16 has significantly more torque throughout the rev range, although this one does develop a significant amount of torque down low. And it feels like a tractor when you come on to the throttle, whether it's this bike or the previous boxer, they have a, a tractor-like um, chuggy pull, which, is, uh, which I kind of like, actually. It's full of character. So this is a, the, uh, as far as the RT is concerned, uh, if you're coming off a dual-purpose bike, and you're looking at BMW, a full-size BMW, sport touring bike, uh, this might be a great option for you. This might also be a great option for you if you're coming off a... Um, a V-twin touring bike, maybe a Harley Davidson or one of the Japanese metric cruiser touring bikes. This might be another good option for you. And I've even heard of a significant amount of Goldwing uh, owners coming off Goldwings, which uh, you think they go more towards the GTL, but I've heard a lot of guys happier with this bike because the, uh, the engine character is closer to what they're used to. And I don't know if that's true or not because I've never owned a uh, Goldwing. I've driven a few, but when you live with a bike for a period of time, you get to understand its character more. Anyway, this is a wonderful motorcycle. This particular one is loaded with every single option you can get with the exception of the driving, the auxiliary driving lights. So what I thought I'd do is go through, more for an interest sake on the RT side, what the new, uh, this generation, 2014, 2015, 2016 generation offers, what you get in the basic bike, and then what you get from, a, um, from an equipment standpoint. So, first things first, the size of the bike. Uh, is it less comfortable or more cramped? No. Is it smaller? Yes. Uh, but it's not cramped. Uh, in other words, this bike will hold you and a passenger very comfortably all day long. Uh, and if you just hop from this bike onto the GT, you probably wouldn't notice much of a difference. In fact, the bike looks very similar. The gauge cluster is very similar in design. The, uh, the bars, the switch gear, the grips, even the seat to a certain degree is very similar in design. But what you do notice primarily with the seat to begin with is how narrow the bike is right on your inner thighs. And somebody mentioned to me, an iron butt rider, a serious iron butt rider, told me that the narrowness tends to allow your knees to come in a little closer and actually reduces stress on your hips. And that makes sense. If you've ridden, uh, in the olden days, we used to ride these big Ninja 1000s which had our knees splayed right out and wondering why our hips and legs felt sore. That could be why. Um, the seat is a little wider in the rear, narrower in the front. And the passenger seat, to me, feels about the same size as a stock GT seat, very comparable. Now, here's one thing you do notice right off the bat. I do notice the bars are just a touch closer to me, sitting on the bike, maybe a half an inch, but it's noticeable. I also notice that the gauge cluster and the speakers are slightly narrower and slightly closer to me as well. Maybe to the tune of about an inch, I'm guessing. I haven't measured. 
I do also notice that the dash comes up a little higher than the GT. So what you have here ultimately is a cockpit that's a little closer, higher, and, and tighter to you. Much the same as the prior generation RT, which I did own. So very nice. Um, now I drove an identical bike to this last summer for an extended period of time, and I really liked it. Um, it was very sporty. I find I can actually get one of these things down a curvy road quicker than I can a GT. Um, the difference in weight between this bike and a GT is about 160 pounds, I'm told, and you feel it. Where you feel it the most is at a standstill. If you're moving the bike around with your feet, if you're in a garage or in a shop or at a stop sign, moving the bike around, pushing the bike, taking the bike off the stand, uh, you notice that weight. That's where you really notice it. Once the bikes are underway, that difference isn't quite as noticeable. Okay. That being said, though, I do notice when I am riding aggressively from corner to corner, I find the boxers are easier to manage. Now on that engine, um, this bike, what contributes to this weight differential is that this bike has a smaller, lighter trellis frame built around the engine as a stress member. Now I believe the K1600 engine is mildly stressed, but the K1600, whether it's a GT or GTL, is a huge spar frame that wraps around that. And it also has a large dual lever front end. This bike uses the telelever front end. And a telelever front end looks, just from a distance, as a normal fork front end. Now there's a shock absorber inside there that, that actually does the, uh, the suspension part, the spring and the dampening. But it's, it's a lighter setup, okay? In the rear, it's uh, still a pair lever rear end, but it is different. It reminds me of the old RT rear end, or the look of it does anyway, although I'm told the inter internals are quite a bit different. But generally speaking, a smaller, lighter bike. So the switch gear, as I mentioned, is the same. It appears to be identical to the K16. We have the Wonder Wheel, which spins and has two-way buttons, push and pull. We also have the a menu button, and above that the favorite button, which you can set up. Uh, beside that is a window, a windshield up and down button, and above that, of course, are the uh, cruise control switches. Uh, there's the normal turn signal cancel switch, the high beam, low beam in the back. This bike is equipped with keyless operation, so there's no key slot, just a button. And uh, switch gear on the other side is the same. Of course, being a keyless operation has one of these uh, car-like key fobs with a flip-out key. I think BMW has mastered the side case setup. These side cases appear to be identical to the K1600 with the exact same volume on the inside. The rear end appears to be the same as the old RT, although I'm sure there's been some upgrades. There is an upgrade for sure in the brake department with the new Brembos that are radially mounted up front. Of course, heated passenger seat. And the rack system is similar to all the big touring bikes that BMW makes and fits all the trunks, I'm told. Fully optioned, this bike has not only the driver powerlet socket, but also the passenger powerlet socket underneath the rear rack. And of course, one area where the K16 really shines, pardon the pun, is in the light department. The RT comes with halogens, both high and low beam. Uh, this particular bike is equipped with the Light Pro, which gives you the light rings. The light height is adjustable using a switch under the beak of the bike, which you can reach underneath and flip depending on your load. This bike is equipped with dynamic ESA which means aside from the general settings you put on the dash, this bike will adapt to road conditions in a microsecond to keep your ride exactly the way you want it. With the keyless operation, the bike has a keyless gas cap, which stays unlocked as long as the key is in the proximity of the sensor. After two minutes, it locks by itself. Very slick. Front storage is roughly the same as the K1600, but the compartments are up top. There's two compartments, one on either side. The one on the right 
holds your iPod and is only available when you equip the bike with audio. The GPS hood is not lockable like it is on the K16. There's a side button to release the cover and the GPS unit. This bike is equipped with excellent wind management with fairings on top. This is the new waterhead design featuring intakes on top and exhaust on the bottom versus front to back like the old bike. There's only one plug on this head and it's a combination of water, oil and air cooled. Very, very nice. Fully optioned, this bike features Shift Assist Pro, which allows you to shift without using a clutch both up and down once underway, and also Hill Hold, which holds the bike while you take off from a hill stand start. It's very nice. Like all my recent BMWs, this one came with a plug-in for an Optimate charger, already wired onto the battery. And of course, this bike being fully optioned also has the chrome exhaust system front to back. And as always, my favorite feature, a center stand. Anyway, this is a great bike and hopefully we'll have more videos on it. Thanks for watching and until next time.